Hi, I'm Ryan Gibbons, and for my Business 550 presentation, I chose to do the United States Airline Industry Case Study. The United States Airline Industry is a major service market that serves a massive number of consumers and has many distinct competitors throughout. Commercial airplanes came about in the early 1940s and were used mainly for transporting troops overseas to fight in World War II. After the war ended, many planes were not of use anymore, and the airline industry flourished from this. Many airlines established themselves as a competitor offering flights to and from different hubs all over the United States. This form of transportation innovated the market. Before airplane travel, there was not many other convenient ways of getting around the country to do business, visit family, or just experience different areas. Airplanes opened up a new venue for customer travel and have since made a large impact on our society as a whole. Some of the airlines that compete in this industry are American Airlines, Delta Airways, JetBlue, and even Southwest. Each of these airlines offer different key concepts to their customers and apply varying strategies to achieve their success. American Airlines and Delta are one of the, two of the older airlines that have been competing for many years with traditional services at high quality fares. JetBlue and Southwest recently came into the market offering lower fares to customers by altering some of the amenities offered by competing airlines. Porter's Five Force Competitive Analysis helps a viewer to access the necessary information separated into five categories to analyze where the competition comes from within the industry. For the airline industry, the risk of new entrants into the market is quite difficult due to the capital requirements necessary to start a new airline service. This would include startup funds as well as any marketing capital in order to get the ball rolling to be able to compete with the other major airlines. However, when booking a flight, consumers are not so much interested in anything other than price because many air airlines offer similar amenities to their consumers. Therefore, a new airline that was able to come up with capital would most likely have an easier time gaining customers if their fares were competitive with those of major in industry firms in the industry. Another reason why new entrants may have an issue entering such a large industry would be the current competitor's ability to manipulate the market. These firms have been in business for many years and have established relationships with many of the suppliers and other necessary acquaintances. New entrants may not be able to receive the most ideal information or agreements that current larger firms may. This would cause an advantage for the firms already established, making it more difficult for newer airlines to set prices that would compete with those of the major airlines. From these three aspects, it can be seen that the risk of new entrants into the airline industry is high, but it's not so high where they would not be able to if they had all the necessary resources. The next force in Porter's analysis is the bargaining power of the buyers in the industry. This is basically how much power the customers have and what competing factors customers are looking for when buying a flight. Some would look at it as a buyer's market if the buyers have high bargaining power. The airline industry is not so much skewed one way, but rather has different factors that support a higher buyer power more. As mentioned before, customers do not have much loyalty when it comes to booking flights. People are usually looking for a great deal, you know, getting the most out of their money. This can cause customers to look elsewhere when booking travel if the prices are not similar in range. When the price points are almost identical, consumers then look for convenience and quality. Many airlines offer similar services to their consumers, therefore not creating much differentiation among themselves. Customers have many different reasons for choosing the specific airline, whether it be past experience or even market promotions. Market realists state that airline Airlines will remain the only option for extremely long haul distances. Customers have a high bargaining power in this industry that deals with a major amount of customer service. Low fares can be attractive, but in this type of business, customer service is definitely a key characteristic of any airline. It must be properly established in this market. Next is the bargaining power of the suppliers. This refers to the company's responsibility for the supplies necessary for the finished goods and the power that they have over the airlines. This includes airplane parts distributors, manufacturers, as well as other service providers. In this market, airlines are dependent on the suppliers to manufacture and supply the resources necessary to carry out their service. 
Also, the suppliers are dependent on the airlines to generate the profit. Seeing as there is a limited number of the suppliers in the industry, the bargaining power sways closer to the suppliers. Airlines do need to have contractual agreements with these suppliers in order to run their businesses and provide for their customers. The two major airplane manufacturers are Boeing and Airbus, which both provide for many of the airlines that exist today. These two companies can mostly set their prices based on the competition between the highest bidders. The many airlines must all go to one of these suppliers to buy or lease their aircrafts. The other key inputs that supply the airline industry are the fuel providers, technology creators, as well as the labor force and the unions involved in the operation of the airline. The airlines rely on these different inputs to be able to provide an output to their customers. Fuel prices, union demand, etc. all influence the ability of the airlines to compete with one another. Therefore, the bargaining power is in the hands of the suppliers due to this dependent relationship. The threat of substitutes force is an interesting one because it consists of indirect competitors that can have a major impact on the health and success of an industry. In the case of the airline industry, the threat of substitutes is lower in developed countries where consumers use flights for short and long distance travel. Some substitutes include high speed trains, buses, cars, and even boats. These are all decent forms of transportation, but do not offer the same type of convenience airlines do. The threat is low to medium for substitutes because while the convenience is overpowering to the substitutes, the cost factor comes into play for short distance travel. Airline fares are costly for consumers who cannot afford this convenience, so therefore they resort to any other means of travel. The airline industry has been continuously trying to keep their fares low in order to compete with these types of substitutes and offer optimal convenience to consumers everywhere. The power of the complement providers in Porter's competitive analysis refers to the stakeholders of the industry discussed. The airline industry has a few complementers such as tourist services, government agencies, as well as technology companies. Any type of tourism service can be considered a complementor to the airline industry because the health and success depends on how efficient the airline industry is at providing for the customer. If there are no tourist attractions in different places, people will not want to fly there, causing a greater impact on the in airline industry. Government agencies who set taxes on the airlines could influence the industry by raising or lowering the tax rates causing higher or lower airfares. Also, technology companies who provide the quality service to the travelers in flight have a major impact on the industry as well. If the plane were not comfortable or technologically advanced, consumers would not be willing to fly based on that convenience factor we discussed earlier. Therefore, the power of the complement providers is considerably high because the impacts each of these providers has on the industry as a whole. The airline industry is categorized into two main strategic groups of airlines. The first grouping is the legacy airlines, who compete at a more quality level, providing extensive customer service venues and catering to their customers' luxury needs. The next would be the low fare airlines that focus on cutting costs to be able to offer lower airfares to their customers that cannot afford expensive travel. Each of these groups operate at different strategies to be able to serve their specific customers effectively. The airline industry has, become, has been impacting the economy for quite some time now with its major footprint when it comes to consumer travel and industry capital funding. The economy has boosted significantly with the increase in the airline industry's performance. At the start of the industry, there were many challenges that brought the industry to its knees, but since then, the economy and the industry are on the incline simultaneously. Consumers' value of the airline industry has increased because of the desire to travel and the dependency on planes to get them there. Also, governments have been benefited nicely with the increase of economic performance of the industry, creating more tax revenue for them. Many investment banks and other capital providers have also benefited from the performance because the capital needs of the industry continue to grow, creating necessary funding opportunities. Lastly, the aircraft manufacturers, fuel providers, and labor unions all achieve successes when the airline industry is doing well in our economy.
These create more jobs for our society and allow for better manufacturing in our country. The airline industry impacts many areas of our economy and has been performing at an above average pace. We can predict to see a continuing growth of the U.S. airline industry's economic performance. For an ethical viewpoint, the airline industry must be concerned with safety and security before anything else. Airlines are responsible for consumers' lives and must operate a smooth experience for all its passengers at all times. The employees of the airlines also must be taken care of correctly. Airline employees are usually part of a union to ensure that they are working under pristine working conditions and are being offered everything they deserve. The airline industry has a responsibility to abide by the government regulations and the Federal Aviation Administration. Recently, there was a publicized incident involving United Airways and one of its passengers. There was a conflict with overbooking that was not handled correctly and therefore resulted in an outrage among the consumers. Airlines must be sure to remain publicly sane in the eyes of the customers or else the industry as a whole will not be able to compete successfully and evolve efficiently. Thank you for listening and fly safe.